Mm, which is claw? Which claw? My God, would these groups just have a bunch of white claws at their party? What is going on outside? Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Malice ma Malacorum, Malice Maliforum, Malice Caferum, Malif oh, Okay, I'm just not gonna bother. I can tell you it means Hammer of the Wicked, not Hammer of the Witches, or... It's the Witch episode of Season 3. Now before I talk about the episode, I really want to talk about the ending of the episode, because that is the part I remember the most. This is after they've taken down the Witch Coven, and Dean and Ruby have a little one-on-one, -on -one, and we find out a few things. We find out, one, that Dean's doomed. So far, there is no plan in terms of trying to save him. They also find out that every human that goes down eventually becomes a demon, no matter what. It can take centuries, it can take forever, but eventually every human soul is turned into a demon. And then the third thing is we find out just how crafty the ambiguous writing was. Because at the end of the episode, Dean asks Ruby why she wants them to win. And she just says, I don't know, I'm different from them. I want to see you win. I remember what it's like to be human. It's so ambiguous that it actually works pretty decently for season four. Was it a planned idea for her to be what she was in season four? It's actually debatable as to whether they actually knew her plan or not. Because like I've said several times throughout this season, they really didn't know what they were doing for a lot of it. They just seemed to fall on all the right stones. They didn't fall through the cracks, they just were able to find a path that worked throughout this whole season. And it's one of the reasons why I'm just going to keep commending this season. This episode follows Sam and Dean going up against a witch coven for the first time, really. They've sort of dealt with witches, but never in this full capacity. And I actually thought I liked this episode a lot more than I do. I actually like the ending a lot. I like the idea that Ruby has a past of being a witch. And also this episode is a slight kind of tribute, uh, homage to the craft. Just the threat that witches have. The one thing that really gets me about witches is hex bags. Because the brothers are always able to find the hex bag really quickly. Whereas I know that if I myself was in this situation, I'd be fucked. I can barely find my car keys every single day. How the hell am I supposed to find a bag? A tiny little bag that's been hidden in my room somewhere. There's demons, there's monsters, there's werewolves, there's vampires. Then there's hex bags, because me trying to find shit is just, whoa. I miss being able to ask my mom to find my car keys. There are some pretty gnarly bits in this episode too, where the first woman is pulling teeth out of her mouth. That's, ah, that gets me a little bit. I like the introduction of how the witches work. I like the idea that they are threats. Like, sure, they're humans, but they've murdered people and they should be taken down just as much. And that's something that's kind of a counterbalance in terms of Sam trying to toughen himself up. Dean is kind of having this weird, like, why are you like this? You're not the way you are. And Sam's like, well, you're gonna die soon, so I gotta try and be like you. It's a little bit more heavy-handed than it was in the previous episodes. You can see that they're really trying to emulate the same thing that they've already said, and they can only say it in so many ways. So it's not as strong, but I actually still very much enjoy this episode. There's also this one little bit where the husband of the woman who gets killed at the beginning, he's eating a burger at White Rock Beach. He tunes into the radio and the station is 101, which is Rock 101 out here. So I thought that was kind of funny because it was uh, Every Rose Has Its Thorn by Poison, which I thought, yeah, that's pretty accurate to the actual radio station that's out here. I like the inclusion of Ruby. I liked her moments in this episode from where she first stops the car to her talk with Dean, to coming in and fighting with the demons. It's not as good of an episode as I remember it being really, it's a very dragged out little story. And there's not as much humor in the episode as you would think there would be. The part where Dean is saved by Ruby is a bit awkward where she walks out and he's just like boop, 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 boop. They kind of try to replicate the back and forth banter that he had with Bella in Red Sky at Morning and it doesn't work as quite as well. So in the end, I'm gonna give Malice Maliform in a four out of seven. And just a little side note, the woman who, as she proclaims herself in the episode, plays Mrs. Renee Van Allen. She actually put me on a very strange path of weird backwards memories. And I remember that she actually starred in a 2003 film called Food Proof that had Ryan Reynolds before he was big and famous. Don't know why, but I knew I recognized her from somewhere. I haven't even seen this movie, but I remember this trailer being everywhere. 
back in 2003. And then I asked you guys to give me your comments about the last episode, so let's read some off. Malice Malacarum, Malice Malif- oh, fuck off, is a mixed bag for me. The effects, witchy vibe, and getting a backstory on Ruby was all good. My problem is Astrotham and Tammy's body seemed more powerful than Azrael from stopping a bullet from the cult in midair. Oh yeah, I forgot about that bit. And then there's Azeroth mentioning a he to Sam as the new leader of, of the Risen to lead the demons, and that he wants Sam eliminated. I'm guessing if the writer's strike didn't occur, we would have learned more about this demon who was trying to kill Sam. It was also great to learn about how demons become demons through losing their humanity in hell. The last nitpick I have of this episode is that it makes more clear of how hopeless Dean's situation is. Throughout this whole season, it makes pretty clear that Dean won't survive and he's going to die no matter what they do. And it really takes away from me personally the tension of what Dean could be, uh, could have been saved and not go to hell. I kind of disagree with that because it just helped verify for me at the time watching this as it was happening live that wow how the hell is he going to get out of this are they actually going to kill dean are they actually going to do it i kind of thought that they weren't going to i didn't think they would do it little did i know how wrong i would be but at the same time how right i was supernatural christmas is definitely a seven out of seven malice is okay there are some funny moments like how the coven didn't realize what they were doing and was just trying to get lower mortgages. Ruby's reveal about how demons uh, become uh, and Dean going to become one when he gets to hell was a big, had a big impact. But the demon woman was kind of weak and Link kind of cheesy part of the episode for me. Funny you should mention about how they technically never had holidays. Oh, and have fun watching the next episode when it comes out. It's going to be basically them celebrating all the birthdays, Thanksgivings, Christmases in one, plus Jensen Ackles dressed in a cartoon. Oh wait, he's talking about the late, the newest episode for season 15. That's coming soon, isn't it? Didn't, wasn't it October? Fuck, I talked about it and it just tells you how much I've been paying attention. Supernatural is set to return filming on August 18th to September 11th. An interesting thing I noticed in the interview is that Jensen says episode 19 is the season finale, while episode 20 in the series is a finale. I'm wondering if that's how that's going to turn out. I should probably do a video about that. Anyways, guys, those are your comments for Malice. Uh, I'm just fucking, I'm not going to say it. The next episode is Dream a Little Dream of Me, so make sure to give me your comments about that episode, and I'll read the best ones off in the next video review. Otherwise, that's all from me. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say The Click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.